Welcome to Redefining Medicine, an intimate and personalized program that illustrates a different side of the practice of medicine. Our in-depth conversations will focus on the physicians and practitioners who are redefining medicine through their integrative, functional, and holistic approach to health and well-being. We are pleased to welcome Dr. Katherine Kodama, owner of BioH Health in Egan, Minnesota. Welcome. Thank you. You have an interesting background. You are board certified in both obstetrics and gynecology, as well as obesity medicine, and you specialize in hormone replacement therapy, but you're also a veteran. That's right. Yeah, let's, <laughs> let's start there. Tell us a little bit about your background. Well, my service started uh, in medical school, so um, the military has a program where you can apply for a scholarship, they pay for your medical school, and then you essentially pay back in years of service after that. Mm -hmm. So, and, and you served in Iraqi Freedom? I did, yes. Tell us a little <laughs> bit about that In 2004, I was deployed with a combat support hospital, uh, and um, my part of the combat support hospital was stationed in uh, in Baghdad, in the green zone at the Ibn Sina Hospital. Uh, and it was um, very interesting. I was there for eight months mm -hmm. and uh, saw a lot. I imagine, yeah. Uh, and you were in the Army for 12 years? I was, yes. Oh, mm -hmm. Okay. And so then uh, you went into private practice after that, or what? Uh, yes, I did. And that's when I moved to Minnesota. And so I practiced as an OBGYN. Uh, for, let's see, maybe a total of about 16 years exclusively in a traditional OBGYN practice. Mm -hmm. And at what point did you decide to uh, also get boarded in obesity medicine? Well, that was um, about uh, two years ago. Oh, okay. uh, now, I, I had observed a trend where uh, we can see some significant effects in terms of uh, increasing weight uh, starting from um, teenagers with increasing PCOS uh, and um, increasing uh, occurrence of uh, infertility, bleeding issues, um, complications in pregnancy, and so uh, I observed those trends and was concerned about it. And uh, interestingly, in medical school, we don't get great training on uh, nutrition and exercise and I think those are really the cornerstones of uh, good health, um, and it's really hard to counsel patients about weight loss without a good foundation in those things. Sure, yes. And, and then you've also um, specialized in hormone replacement therapy. Yes. What got you interested <laughs> in that? Well, I have my own personal history um, regarding hormone replacement. I uh, developed um, premature ovarian failure in medical school. Uh, and after um, a couple of decades of hormone replacement, essentially using synthetic hormone replacement, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. Um, and so uh, a lot of my um, interest in treating uh, hormone replacement was just knowing that that uh, is a factor for a lot of women. It's hard to get, um, there's an established bias against uh, bioidentical hormone replacement. Hormone replacement in general and I think that uh, there's a significant need uh, for women to be able to access this type of care in a safe way. And so I think that's the basis of my interest in, in that. Do a lot of your patients express a, a fear about uh, cancer and, and HRT? Some of them do. I would say a lot of them, by the time that they step into my clinic, they have already done their own research um, and um, have decided that that's what they want to do, and so they've uh, come across the data in some way or another. Uh, some of them do uh, are maybe a little less informed about um, about what the uh, real data is in terms of hormone replacement and uh, and those purported health risks. So uh, you were, you went to a couple of uh, AFRM conferences out in Vegas, I understand. Yes, I did. Uh, yes, the last mm -hmm. two years, and, yes. and now we're here in. Uh, LA at a uh, BHRT symposium, but also a peptides uh, uh, workshop. What are you attending here? I'm doing the bioidentical hormone replacement conference. Mm -hmm. You're currently um, uh, working with uh, your clientele and patients with uh, BHRT. Yes. Uh, what are you looking to, you know, what knowledge are you looking to you know, pick up at, at these conferences? 
I think that uh, it's always good to hear from uh, different practitioners because there are different ways to practice hormone replacement. Uh, and I'm always humbled by going to these conferences and feeling like there is yet still more that I want to learn. Um, I think that uh, some of the information about estrogen metabolism, I hadn't previously really heard in uh, as much detail. And so I think that that's uh, something that I definitely want to bring more into my practice uh, in informing patients how they could uh, potentially uh, identify and further modify their risk uh, for cancer. And when we were talking earlier, you were saying that you uh, have an interest in uh, peptide uh, therapy yes. as well. Yes, yes. Yeah. So there's such, a, there's such an abundance of really um, great topics at these conferences. And I think that uh, these are therapies that aren't you know, available in traditional conventional medical care, um, but there's a real role for, for these, um, for patients who traditional therapies have, have failed. Um, I think that uh, there's um, uh, some, uh, some great opportunities to treat patients. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about your practice. Tell us more. Uh, so uh, largely I practice uh, hormone replacement. I do a lot of counseling on weight loss as well. Mm -hmm. I have an interest in aesthetics and so I perform a lot of aesthetic treatments. Uh, also uh, incorporating PRP and uh, injectables. Uh, as well as um, devices that deliver energy for aesthetic purposes, um, vaginal rejuvenation. Mm -hmm. And is there a uh, uh, great interest uh, in your patient population for those services? Uh, yes, I think that there is. I would love for that to grow even further. Uh, I think some areas of the country are probably more conservative than others. So, um, but I think that uh, there is just the promise of growth, I think, um, as time goes on with all of these therapies. Mm -hmm. Now, is your uh, practice a cash-based practice? It is, yes. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about that transition from you know, traditional uh, OBGYN type practice to a, a cash-based practice. Was that a difficult one? It was very difficult. Um, in terms of introducing patients to that type of uh, model of, um, of care. And so I think a lot of patients weren't very familiar with that um, and are still uh, looking for, um, still have the expectation that they'd be able to use their insurance. And they certainly can uh, submit um, their statements for possible reimbursement or use HSA funds. Uh, of course, a lot of the treatments that I provide just aren't covered by insurance anyway. So, um, so it's a different model of delivering care that I think that um, is new to a lot of patients. I think it certainly keeps me very in tune to the cost of care. And so I try to find ways to uh, make that as, as accessible as possible. So talking to patients about uh, where they can potentially get their medications for a lower price um, if that's necessary, um, or giving them options for a lower price lab cost. I think, um, I think that that's something that pr providers really have to be willing to do in order to make that care accessible. Are you happy practicing uh, the way that you practice? Can you imagine going back to uh, the more conventional approach? No, I would never want to go back. <laughs> I think that um, you know, practicing in this situation, um, I can tailor what I think is um, interesting, but also necessary, interesting to me, but also uh, I think very you know, vitally necessary for patients. Um, and I think you know, combining this mix of hormone management, obesity medicine, and aesthetics, you know, I think it um, covers a lot of interesting bases yes. uh, for patients. I would never be able to practice you know, those uh, other um, aspects of medicine in a traditional OBGYN clinic. So having your own practice is certainly a way to um, provide those services that I think uh, can um, provide a more extended um, uh, um, options for care for patients um, because those patients who have hormonal issues, for example, often have weight issues as well. Um, and I think it also is a way for me to explore my interests as well in terms of uh, regenerative medicine like peptide thera uh, therapy, PRP, exosomes. Uh, I think that those um, incorporating those uh, new areas of practice uh, are um, really fascinating to me. 
Um, obviously, you know, practicing in my own clinic is uh, very challenging, and uh, there's a lot of um, uh, financial challenges, but I think that uh, um, there's certainly ways to go about that to make that very rewarding. Well, it sounds like we'll see you back here at A4M in the future. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for having me.